We're going to draw the molecular orbital energy level diagram for N2. So I've already pre-drawn some of our orbitals to save time. You know that nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, five on the valence shell. So our first uh, molecular orbital will be sigma 1s, and then we'll have sigma star 1s, and then our second will be sigma 2s, that will be bonding, and sigma star 2s, that will be a non-bonding orbital where there's uh, ov uh, no overlap. So let's go ahead and put um, these two electrons. We'll fill here and here, and then we'll put our two antibonding in the antibonding orbital, and then for the second energy level, <laughs> the same thing. Okay, so that takes care of the sigma on the 1s and 2s. Now, what's going to happen on our uh, 2p level, and we have large 2s, 2p interaction. So that means that our orbitals, our bonding orbitals are set up this way. So we have uh, pi 2px, a pi 2py, and then right here is our sigma 2pz. So because of this large 2s2px interaction, our pi bonds are at lower energy. Then when we go to fill up our anti-bonding orbitals, we've got pi star 2px and pi star 2py. And then lastly, we'll have our sigma star 2pz. And so that's the order of how they're filled up when we have high or large 2s, 2px interaction. So let's go ahead and fill these up. We've got six electrons to deal with. We're going to fill up the lower energy first. So my pi, the 2 pi, um, 2px and 2py fill up first. And then we're going to go to our sigma 2pz. And you'll notice that that takes care of all six electrons. There are no anti-bonding electrons on with N2. So that's why we end up with a triple bond. So I'm just going to simply now connect all these with light lines. Okay, so now let's go ahead and calculate our bond order, and then we'll do electron configuration. So the bond order is one half of 10 electrons. So that's the 10 bonding electrons. Let's take a look and count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to circle 
the bonding electrons. So we'll do that in blue. So these are all of our bonding electrons, of which we have 10. At minus 4. of our anti-bonding electrons, that's these two right here, so that's going to equal 3. So you know that nitrogen has a triple bond and molecular orbital theory proves that out. So these are our molecular orbitals here and these are our atomic orbitals. Alright, and now let's move to um, bond length. Because we have a triple bond, the bond length is going to be short. Again, because we have high bond order, we have short bond length. The number of unpaired electrons is zero, so our molecules' uh, magnetic properties are diamagnetic. And the bond dissociation energy is going to be high. And the bond strength is going to be high or strong. Uh, one more thing we would like to do now is look at the electron configuration. That will be the final thing we look at. So we're simply going to, let me get that out of the way. For us. Okay, so we're going to list all of these orbitals in order. So we have one sigma 1s2 and then sigma star 1s2 and then we've got sigma 2s2. Again, we're just going in order um, of the energy. And then we have sigma star 2s2. And then we go up to the pi. We've got pi 2px2. And then we have pi 2py. Two, and then lastly, we have sigma 2pz2, and there's no anti-bonding on the pi. Again, what we did was we simply got these um, electron configuration by just taking these orbitals, these molecular orbitals, in order.